Hello, everybody. My research focuses on 15th century type. OK, I will try again. It's on. They say it's on. Can you hear now? I will try again. I don't know. Doesn't work. Does it work? It's better. OK. So my research focuses on 15th century type. It's based on photographic enlargements and detailed analysis of uh, printed marks of type. Today I will uh, discuss about Jensen's Roman, the Roman type uh, by Nicholas Jensen. I will try to explain the importance of this type with particular attention to the lowercase letters. Because, as I will try to show, they became the model for all the subsequent Romans up to the present. But first I briefly explain the method I follow to take pictures and to analyze them. So I take two kinds of pictures. I take pictures with a reflex camera placed on a tripod, and I achieve pictures like this, where the width of the pictures is about 10 centimeters. And uh, with these pictures, we can, uh, we can uh, check the spacing, we can check the vertical alignment and the angular alignment of letters. And then I take a second kind of pictures with a with a um, compact camera on top of a scale magnifier, with the lens of a camera that is in contact with the lens of a magnifier. The magnifier is a scale magnifier, it has a scale on the bottom. And I achieve pictures like this, where the width of the pictures is about uh, 15 millimeters. And uh, this method produces photographic enlargements of high quality without distortion. Of course, I need to take many pictures of this kind to cover an entire alphabet. So the pictures are edited in a photo processor where the contrast between the letters and the paper is manually increased. When I select the best printed letters, I cut out from the photographs. I collect them in documents like this. This is a working document. And the final output is usually something like that. That it's the character set of Jensen Roman in his first edition the Eusebius of 1470. Now I'm going to show some pictures done with a reflex so you can uh, get used to the quality of Jensen's type, for one, for the people that don't know that. And I, I think you, you should focus on the spacing, because uh, the spacing of Jensen, as you will see other early types later, spacing of Jensen is incredibly even comparing to his peers. So, Jensen was the second printer to open on an office in Venice, and he started printing in spring of 1470. He was born in northeastern France, probably in the 1430s. His contemporaries consider Jensen as a prototype of printer, of a successful printer. And posterity has decreed his fame as second only to Aldus Manutius, to the one of Aldus Manutius. This acclamation derived from Jensen's success as a businessman, from his incredible strategy of self-promotion, but was mostly due to the high quality of his type. Not just Roman type that is the focus of, of today, but even his rotunda types were copied all over the place. They became the models for all the rotunda. So it's time to look closer at Jensen's Roman. Jensen Roman has, uh, has very long ascenders and descenders. Uh, the X site is about 40% of the gouge of type, and the body size and the type size is about 16 points. I go back to the character set to focus on the most important letter forms, on the peculiar letter forms that carry a lot of information from a morphological point of view. This is important because uh, this, this uh, recognizing the key letters help us recognize Jensen's type in other books that are printed with a type that we, are not, we don't know if it's Jensen's or not. So the first and the, most, and the most peculiar letter is probably capital M. Capital M with vertical stems and the bilateral serif on top. Another peculiar letter is capital R with uh, 
this tail will look like, it looks like uh, an elephant tusk. And then other peculiar letter forms are H and N, that are very wide, comparing to O and to other uppercase letters, as you can see from here. And then turning to lowercase letters, lowercase d has this, this lower serif that extends below the baseline, and it's very easy to recognize when you see, when you see it printed with a naked eye. L letter e has an oblique bar like almost all 15th century Romans, but this oblique bar extends a little bit outside the ball, and this is clear in some instances of very fine printing, as the one in the middle. Then there are other letters that look ordinary to a present reader, but they are actually Jensen's most important innovations as A, G, and H. Today we are so accustomed to Roman letter forms that it's hard to grasp the significance of Jensen's work. He chose uh, shapes for these letters and for most of the lowercase letters that became customary in Roman type. We can understand this comparing Jensen's Roman to other Romans cut in the very early period of Venetian printing. Like Spira, it was the first Roman cut in Venice, 1479. So the most striking uh, difference is letter H. Because uh, Jensen H has a straight stem on the right, while uh, most of the other early Romans had uh, follow the uncial shape of age, with a round age, like this. Another important uh, letter that to me is uh, Jensen's masterpiece is lowercase g. You can compare lowercase g with the other g's that were cut in those early years. And we can understand the extraordinary quality of Jensen's design comparing with the other g's. Jensen was better to bring, was, Jensen was able to bring a better balance between the lower and the upper counter, so that the lower counter is not too small comparing, is not too big compared to the upper one. And the letter better integrates with the surrounding letters. Here you can see a digest, a comparison among the first early Romans in Venice. So a sign of the immediate success of Jensen Roman is that it was employed by several other printers. Fonts derived from Jensen's punches are found in books in many printing offices in Venice and Northern Italy starting from 1471, so about six months or one year after he started printing. These are samples of Jensen's Roman employed by the printing office, but how can I say that all these letters come from Jensen's punches? All these types were analyzed and compared many sorts for each letter with Jensen's Roman by the meaning of overlying letters, like this. So when two editions show a similar type, the two types are compared to determine whether they share some source and possibly whether they come from the same punches. The comparison is done by means of overlying images like this. The structure of a letter is what we need to focus, and not their outline, not the details, not the serifs, not the terminals, but the structure, the underlying structure, the skeleton of the letter, is what we need the, to focus on when we want to understand if two letters come from the same punch. This, you can see that there are differences. In the gray, there is more gray on top, but the structure correspond. We will see later a type where the structure does not correspond, so it's easier probably to, to understand. The same for lowercase d, despite the boldness and the, all this smash outline of uh, press of Martialis d, the two outlines, the, two, the structure of the two letters correspond. The same for capital R. 
you see that there is some gray in the middle, it means that there was more ink on that part of the letter. But the structure, the two, the two letters correspond. So, summing up uh, Jensen spread, the Jensen Roman is found in books printed by more than 40 printers before the end of the 15th century. Besides Venice, we find in many other towns in northern Italy, as you can see here. The spread of Jensen's Roman work was particularly intense in the 1470s uh, during uh, Jensen's lifetime. Jensen died in 1480, after 10 years of uh, printing. And in the, in the 1470s, about uh, 20 presses employed the Jensen's Roman. For this reason, I hypothesize that Jensen sold or leased cast type. And in some occasion, in some limited occasion, he never even sold or leased sets of matrices. We know because these people were kept on casting with the same variations, let's say. So, following his achievements as a designer, Jensen is also accountable for initiating, for starting the trade of type as early as 1471, at least in Italy. Another sign of the immediate success of the Jensen Roman is that it was soon imitated. The imitation could be loose, but could be also very faithful executed. This is the case of a, ta of a type we are looking na at now. This is a type uh, used by Gabriele Di Pietro, a an early Italian printer from 1472. This Roman type uh, shows strong similarities with Jensen's Roman in all its sorts. It's Di Pietro on top and Jensen's on the bottom. So if we compare letters, we find that most of the lowercase don't give a clear result, as you can see from this A. It seems that the, the structure of the letters are the same, but there are some very small differences that make it doubtful. When we, when we look at D, we start finding differences in the structure. Not much about the arches, but uh, Jensen's D in the bowl is, is, is lighter. Jensen is the red one. But uh, in the lower serif, but you can see that Jensen's lower serif is deeper, goes beyond, goes, is, exceeds the baseline more. And this is probably a structural difference. The structural difference is clear when we turn to uppercase. You can see here that despite imitating the same letter, Di Pietro's Roman, that is in gray, is wider. It's about uh, two to three tenths of millimeters wider than Jensen. And the same structural difference is found in capital R. So Jensen's R in red is taller, the bowl is slightly different, and the tail is different. It's smoother and wider. So this is just a digest of a comparison between Di Pietro and Jensen, because I made a comparison for all the letters and many instances of them. But, uh, and the comparison tells us that uh, they derive from different punches. So despite uh, being very difficult to recognize at uh, naked eye when you see printed, and this tells us even how good were 15th century punch cutters. They, could, they were able to imitate an existing type so faithful, and we are talking about a 16 points type. So a type uh, whose height was a few millimeters. So besides Di Pietro, there are other types that appeared in books printed in the 1470s and 1480s that look like loose imitations of Jensen, like this Blavis Roman. But there is a big difference in type size because Blavis is about 12 points instead of 16 points of Jensen's, but the X side is not so smaller and the shape of the letters, of the lowercase letters, is very similar. I have identified a dozen types that look like Jensen, look like loose imitation of Jensen. But this is a small number compared to all the Roman types that were cut in Venice, that are about 
55 or 60 in 15th century. However, the majority of this type were very popular. Like this type, used by the De Gregoris brothers, that they used it uh, from the 1490s for the next 20, 30 years. And especially this type, that they called the Scotus Roman because the first known printer who used it was Octavianus Scotus in Venice in 1481. This Roman was the most popular Roman type in the Renaissance because it was used for more than 100 years by more than 150 uh, printing offices all over Europe. And the similarity of Jensen in the lower case is, is very is peculiar. This is the Scotus Roman used in Paris in the 1530s. However, looking at the, this, this matter from a, an historical perspective, the most influential among the loose imitation of Jensen is this, that I bet you recognize, the Dietna Roman. Griffo's Roman followed a different design approach for their capitals, because Griffo's capitals are much closer than Jensen's to the imperial inscriptional from the capitals of uh, imperial Roman inscriptions. But turning to lowercase letters, we found that there are strong similarities. There is a difference in the exide, but while there is no much difference in the width of the letter, and this makes the Etna letters look more compact than Jensen. But when we look at the proportions of the letters, we will see that they are very similar. Even the relative proportions of a letter, if we, if we overlay these letters with N and O coming from the same type, we will see that basically the relationship between O and N, for instance, is the same. There is a difference, and it's one of the few differences, in lowercase a. The Etna is much, is not much, is shorter, is, is narrower, sorry. Focusing on details, on single details, we see even that the choices of Jensen in the terminals were repeated by Griffo. You see that in letter A, the terminal looks abrupt, like a mark left by lifting a pen, while in C and F, it's more a regular drop-like terminal. They follow the same construction. And in G, the year of G is just a straight stroke. As it's well known, that the Etna Roman became the model to follow in Paris after 1530. This was the first type that was cut following the Aldin fashion, as was called by Verblit. And if we have some doubt about uh, the model this punch cutter followed, we can see the capital M. Capital M was cut without the upper right serif, as we can see in the Dietna Roman. These types, there were three types of three different sizes, cut more or less in 1530, were soon imitated by French punch cutter. And Verblit considered them the foundation of French 16th century Romans, which through their best known uh, exponent, Claude Garamond, remained in general use in most of Europe until the mid-18th century. So, through the work of Griffo and the French punch cutters like Garamond, Jensen's design choices in the lowercase letters became the basis of Roman type for the following centuries. The only exception is lowercase e with a horizontal middle stroke. That was one of the innovations of the Etna. All the Roman's lowercase, apart from E, to this day, have been designed on the same framework of Jensen. Although changes in design parameters have produced different designs, such as proportions, thick and thin contrast, angle of stress, treatment of details, the basic structure, the skeleton, is still Jensen. 
given how early this type was cut, 1470, the second Roman known Roman ever cut, and how different it looks from the other types cut in those years, it seems to me that there are grounds for considering Jensen among the main contributors to, history, to the history of Western culture. Thank you. <laughs>